Hello everyone, this is Jonathan here from Unity Game Programming for Beginners, Wild Cockatiel Games. And in this video I'm going to be answering a question that comes from a YouTube viewer, which is, how can I get these enemy ships to only fire when the player ship, that's me on the bottom there, is at the, is underneath one of the enemy ships? So right now they're firing at any time. Let's try to get them so they're only firing when I am directly underneath them. So this is a line of sight issue, and uh, it's this is specifically for the game laser defender that's made in the Udemy course. However, this technique could be applied to any game with a similar type of feature. So let's get into this. This is a 2D line of sight issue. So number one, let's take a look at this player script. What we ideally want to do is check in the enemy script if the player is directly underneath. Now we can do this by getting a reference to the player's X coordinate. So I'm just going to start off right away by saying public float x pause, and that's going to be a reference to the player's x position. Okay, so very simply put, if we write here in the update feature, we can say x pause equals transform dot position dot x, and then if we print that out, x pause, we can immediately see in the console. There we are down here that it's going to start giving us a, a reference to the player. Whoops, if I have... There it is. So we can basically see as I move around, it's showing me exactly where the player is located. So the, the max x or min x is negative 8.71, and on the other side it would be eight, positive, uh, roughly the same, 8.88. .88. Okay, so knowing that, that's already a decent start. What we could do now is go into the enemy behavior script and take a look at this invoke fire method. Um, where? Okay, here we are. Fire. So right now the enemies are just firing basically at any point, and this is called through an invoke. So let me just find it. Fire. Oh, it's not through an invoke. It's just uh, if random dead value is less than probability. Okay. So number one, we're not going to really need this. Uh, well, we we could have this uh, I this if statement here, but really what we want to do is get a reference to this player's x position. So let's get a let's declare a similar float here and say player x pause. Oops, public float player x pause. And we'll also do an x pause for the enemy ship. So in the update we're just going to say here this for the enemy ship x pause equals transform dot position dot x that's for the enemy ship and player x pause is equal to, well we're going to have to find the player, so we're going to say is equal to game object dot find object of type player controller open close parentheses dot x pause. Now if we print this out again we can say enemy x pause is x pause and player x pause is uh, player x pause. And also I'm going to get rid of this print statement in the player update script because it's going to be a little too much going on in the console otherwise. So let's go back, take a look. So it's all over the place and it's printing five times, once for every ship, but we can see that now Unity has an idea where the enemy ship is and where the player ship is. So now what we can do and I, I'm just going to do this step by step here, is we can say it right here in this enemy fire statement, we're going to say if x pause is equal to player x pause fire. Now this is what this is going to do is drastically, drastically reduce the rate of enemy fire. In fact, the enemies might not even fire at all because I'm just using equals equals, which means the, these numbers have to line up exactly. And as we can see, that's too small a differential. So even if I'm like right under the ship, they're not firing at all because well, you can see these are five digit or six digit numbers here with like all these decimal places. And unless those numbers line up exactly, nothing's going to be happening. So that's too specific. What we need to do is give it some deviance. Okay, so how can we get some variance here? Well, if we go into the player controller ship, what we can do is we can declare a new float and call this player half width. And we're going to make this equal to get component 
sprite renderer, and I'm going to explain all this in a second, dot bounds, dot extents, dot x. And what this float reference is going to give us is half the width of the player sprite. Now, in fact, if we go here and we print this out again so we can see what we're doing, player half width, and we go back into the enemy ship, and we, I'll just comment this out for now, maybe I'll need it again later. And now we go back into Unity, and we hit play. What we're going to get here uh, is a reference 0.495. So what is this 0.495? This is half our player width. And if we go here and we create an empty game object, and we set this game object to position 0, what we can do is we can type, instead of 0, we can type 0.495, and we can see that it takes us exactly to the right extent of the player ship. And again, if I type negative 0.495, Oops, that's a negative, wrong number. Neg negative 0 0.495, it takes us to the left half of the player ship. So we now have the exact width of the player ship. It's 0.495 times 2. That would give us the entire width of the player ship. Okay, so we're already onto something a little better here. Now let's go back into Unity, and we can say here that we're going to declare a new float again. We're going to say float left. Uh, extents is equal to xpause my um, oh I'm in the wrong script that's why I'm getting confused here right idea wrong script so we're gonna go here to the player one and we're gonna type float left x equals xpause minus player half width and then we're gonna type float right x equals x pause plus player half width. And this is now going to give us the uh, left and right extents of where the player ship is, no matter where the player is on the field. Okay, now if we go back into, actually, I can't declare these here. I'm going to actually need a reference to these. So I'm going to delete the word float here, and we're just going to declare them up top so the enemy ship can get a reference to them. So public float left x and right x save and now here we are again so what, this is a little too specific as we now know but what we want to say is player left x we declare these these could actually be declared locally I don't need to really declare them up here so just get rid of this float player left x and we can just copy paste this and say player right x equals dot right x except small r there we go okay now this if statement isn't going to work but what we can do is we can say if the enemy ships uh, x position is greater than or equal to player left x and x pause is less than or equal to player right x now we can fire and let's see the difference see how this works oh there we go So it's still a little tricky, and that might have to do with the other if statement here. So let's just try actually getting rid of this uh, random value probability statement. Just going to cut this and put it up here for now. Try running this again. Yeah, so there we go. Now they're firing directly only if the player ship is underneath the enemy ship. They're firing, they're firing way too rapidly, but uh, we, we can just figure out how to do that in a different way. Um, I haven't really read into this code to figure out what this is doing, but we could just uh, basically say, um, let's just do this as an invoke, or invoke repeating, fire, and let's just give it a time frame here, uh, zero point, I'll do the first one right away, and then zero point every quarter of a second will fire. So rather than just firing outright, we're going to invoke repeating, 
And then we're going to say here, else... So if the player, if the enemy ship is not above the player ship, we're going to say cancel invoke fire. And we don't need this if statement here anymore. Let's just try this now and see how this works instead. Oh, I need an F, that's why. There we go. Point two five, still a little too much. Point nine. Ah, of course, I just realized why this is happening. Um, it's because every single time the player, the enemy ship is underneath the player, it's starting to fire again. So what we just need here is, it's basically, it's calling that invoke repeating multiple, multiple times. So what we're going to do here is going to say private bool is firing. And then what we're going to do here is where we call it, we're going to put one more if statement and say if not is firing, exclamation mark, is firing. Invoke repeating. Now we're going to set is firing is equal to true. So it's only going to get called once. And then we can just say here is firing is equal to false. And try this one more time. There we go. So now they're only firing if the player ship is underneath and they're firing at a reasonable rate. So you can play around with these numbers, find something you like, but uh, this is how to get a 2D line of sight working. So thanks very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions and see you in the next video.